Welcome to our lecture online and here's example number two of how to deal with reflection and here we have something that's not quite a corner reflector so it's a little bit more complicated. There's not a right angle here, there's not a 90 degree angle. We have an inbound ray and so as it bounces off the first surface and as it bounces off the second surface we want to find the angle between the inbound ray and the exiting ray. So the first thing we do is look at the first reflection and we draw our normal to the surface and then we can see that this angle right here let's call that theta sub 1 which is the uh, angle of incidence will then equal the angle of reflection as the ray gets reflected in the opposite direction right there and so this here becomes theta sub 2 which is the angle of reflection and those two have to be equal to each other since this is already a 60 degree angle then this must be a <coughs> excuse me a 30 degree angle which means that this must also be a 30 degree angle Here's the inbound ray, here's the reflected ray. Now it reflects off of this surface. Now the question is, how will it reflect off of that surface? Again, draw a normal to the surface, like so. And this then becomes the angle of incidence. Let's call it theta sub 3. And then we have an angle of reflection. Let's call this theta sub 4. Now, how big are theta sub 3 and theta sub 4? The best way to figure that out is to have some reference point and let's draw a line that's horizontal from the point of reflection right here out to the right. And then you can see by using this triangle right here, this is of course a triangle and this is a 30 degree angle, that's a 90 degree angle. That means that this angle right here, let me use the blue to indicate that, this angle right here is a 60 degree angle. So 60 plus 90 plus 30 makes 180. So if this is 60, then how big is theta sub 3? Well, if this normal line is perpendicular to this and this line here is perpendicular to that then the angle included by this line and this line must equal the angle included by this line and this line and if this angle is 10 degrees that means this angle must be 10 degrees and so using a slightly different color here I can say that this angle here is equal to 10 degrees well then if this angle is 60 and this angle is 10 then theta sub 3 must therefore be 60 minus 10 or 50 degrees. So theta sub 3 is 50 degrees, which means that theta sub 4 must also be 50 degrees because again, the angle of incidence must equal the angle of reflection. All right, so how much has the angle changed? How much has the ray changed? Well, it went from there to there to there to there. And if we add up all these angles, the interior angles, so we can say that theta sub 1 is equal to 30 degrees, theta sub 2, <laughs> I say 2 and I write 3, that's interesting, theta sub 2 is equal to 30 degrees, so I'm adding these two angles together, now I add those two angles together, so that means theta sub 3 is equal to 50 degrees, and theta sub 4 is equal to 50 degrees, add them all up, the total angles add up to 160 degrees, which means then, if I continue this line straight across this way, and I continue this line straight across this way. If those angles had added up to 180 degrees, the two lines would be in parallel. So it is 20 degrees short of 180 degrees, which means when they cross over here, these two lines will be the same as these two lines. That means this angle is also 20 degrees, which means the angle between the inbound and the exit ray are 20 degrees. So this line coming this way, this ray going out that way. And that's how you do that.